congratulations on the launch of Ori and the Will of the Wisps, by the way. It's being received very well, which I'm sure you're all very excited about. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah, a long time, a long time coming. Um, yeah, I've been part of, or has or been part of my life for nine years now. Wow. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, having shipped two games, uh, you know, the second time round, we weren't, uh, we weren't like the invisible studio that no one knew. Um, so we, we had to deal with the uh, anticipation this time, but it looks like we delivered. So, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, really glad to hear that. And yeah, definitely understand with such a long wait in between. And I actually might touch on that again a bit later. Yep. Um, so music plays such a key role within Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Uh, how involved yep. are you during the development process to allow such cohesion between the audio and the visual? That's the coolest thing about working for Moon Studios is I get access to the game really early on. So I might not write much music at the beginning, but I'm able to learn the game uh, inside out. Mm. Uh, so right at the beginning we're des uh, the team is designing levels but there's no art in them and what they basically try and do is to make the levels fun without any art and without any sound and without any music and then see how the and then when you put the art in it's already a fun fun experience um, but getting getting to know the gameplay first allows me to like establish the the rhythm the speed the tempo of the game i feel like most games especially ones that involve uh movement uh all have a tempo um, and my favorite comparison, because it's like literally the opposite kind of game, is is Doom. Like, <laughs> Doom's recent game, it has a certain feel and a certain tempo. It has like a general vibe to the gameplay. Um, and, and Ori's the same. Like, Ori, when, you know, when you've... When you've uh, when, you, when you're running and jumping and platforming, there is a general speed to everything. Anyway, so that, like... The, learning the gameplay helps me figure out some stuff in terms of like the rhythm and pace then the art comes in and i associate different instruments with different colors um so that helps me make decisions on how i'm going to use the orchestra and any of the more esoteric instruments that i decide to use for each environment mm -hmm. and then finally there's the characters and story aspect and in this game we've got so many more characters which gives me the opportunity to write a bunch more mm -hmm. themes and then by the time I figured all that out, we're already like three years in development, <laughs> and I maybe haven't written that much music, but because I now know the game, uh, I'm able to hit the accelerate button really, really, like really, really hard, and bec because I know the game, it actually makes it much easier to, to write music and get an idea for the, for the general flow of the entire game. I, I, when I write music for, for Ori, I'm not just thinking about, oh, I've got to do the 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 uh, the Luma pools environment or the Inkwater Marsh environment. I'm not thinking about it like in little blocks. I'm trying to think about it how it all like goes together from start to finish. The overall journey. Obviously, the individual blocks also have to be good, but it's more important to me to like make sure that the overall roller coaster ride is there. And that I feel like if I came on at the end, it it, it might be doable. Uh, but you're definitely <laughs> reducing your chances. Of being able to figure out like the best best way to to write music for the game, um, especially one which is uh, you know where you, you mentioned yourself like the music is so closely tied to the visual. Mm. No, really, that's quite a deep answer, but like uh, I hope that's that it is like a important aspect of the studio. Yeah, absolutely, and it's so good to hear that you are so involved from even as early on as the grey box stages to just yep. understand that feel. Um, yep. So that's fabulous. Um, touching on something you mentioned there, in previous in interviews you've discussed relying on a singular theme throughout the first game, whereas in the second yep. you were able to explore using different themes with different characters. Um, yep. Describe how you made each of these new themes feel both unique and consistent. So uh, I'll start with the um, I'll start with the baby owl because that's mm. the first that's the first new character that you meet and pretty much everyone's seen it at this point. Um, well, first of all, um, it's cute and small, uh, and like I, I, I looked at it and I was like, I'm, I need to use a high wood. I, I knew I was going to use a woodwind instrument of some kind, um, and I have a, a friend who is a woodwind specialist, and I basically gave her the the melody that I'd hmm. I'd written. 
and I said, can you like play this on a bunch of different high pitched instruments? Like she owns like 300. Uh, and I was just like, you know better than I do. And I, you know, I described, described to her the, the character. Um, and uh, we eventually settled on, and I cannot believe that we settled on this, the recorder. Like, I hate the recorder. Does anyone like the recorder? Uh, <laughs> I mean, but she she plays it in a way that makes you forget it's a recorder. Um, there There is apparently a way to play the recorder beautifully. So yeah, it is actually recorder for most of the prologue of the game. Wow. Um, yeah, I know. It's uh, Trust me, I'm as surprised as you sound. Um, I'm still kind of surprised, to be honest. Uh, but uh, yeah, it just... When I heard it, I was like, this feels like the right instrument. Um, because it does... It does have a very pure tone, and hmm. Ku's character is very pure and naive and, and, and innocent. Um, and she is really just yearning to fly for the entire prologue. Um, and the end hmm. of the prologue, she finally gets to fly. Um, and then when they burst through the clouds in the prologue, you get um, Ori, who is kind of represented by uh, a, a vocalist when they burst through the clouds, but it's doubled with the recorder on top. Um, so you kind of get the best of both... Ori's world and and uh, Ku's new instrument um, in Ku's theme, um, and yeah, that's pretty consistent. Whenever you see Ku, you're going to see the recorder or similar high pitched instrument because the recorder's range can be somewhat limiting sometimes. Um, so that's Ku. Uh, the other, which is a complete opposite, and it's a good one to follow on, is Quolok. Um, Quolok is the big toad in the game. Some mm. people call it a frog. I've always called it a toad. Um, but uh, yeah, for Quolok, he's a massive lumbering creature. And I always thought it would be interesting to have a melodic instrument in the bass. Most most melodies usually end up in, in the higher instruments, violins or flutes, clarinets, trumpets. And I was like, what if we had an instrument that was like uh, for a character that was primarily in the bass? And I ended up choosing mm. bass clarinet, which you start to hear um, as you're approaching the Quolox hollow environment. And then you hear it while you're in Quolox cavern. And then you only hear the theme, which started in bass clarinet, in its full majesty when you finally meet Quolox, which usually takes most people about 30 to minutes to an hour of gameplay. Yeah. Um but yeah, I wanted to. I, I felt like having a low instrument u being used as a theme would would automatically make it stand out. Um, and it's the it's the only it's the only character in the game that has a bass instrument um, as as its theme. Um, also, it's a swamp creature, and bass clarinet uses reeds. Um, <laughs> it, you you need a reed to be able to play the instrument. So I was like, well, that's clearly a a good match um, or a thematically appropriate match. <laughs> Um, and then last of all, uh, I mean, there's, there's a couple of other sub themes, but this is the last kind of main character, uh, Shriek, uh, the antagonist of the game. Uh, it's actually, it's actually a pretty simple theme. It's really just a descending scale. Um, it goes up like uh, for one little bit at the beginning and then the rest of it is literally descending. Um, and you hear this theme for the first time when Ori and Ku get separated at the end of the prologue, and then you hear it pretty much every time you encounter Shriek, and also in Shriek's environment, which is right at the end of the game, which is the, the willow tree, which is the kind of purpley-pink environment we have at the end. Mm. Um, it's kind of obvious, but a descending theme usually implies something terrible or sad. Um, and if you play through the game, you'll discover that Ku's, Ku's, uh, sorry, not Ku, um, Shriek's uh, story is quite sad. Um, and it felt like, it felt like the right thing to do, especially when a lot of the other themes are more uplifting in tone. Um, the last theme I want to call out is the one for the spider. Um, the spider isn't like a main character. Um, Mora, the spider is only, um, you only meet her in the spider environment, which is the <laughs> Moldwood Forest. Um, but uh, that music um, was the most one of the most challenging things to do on this uh, on this game because we haven't really done horror in Ori before, and it's not really a horror environment, but it is like it's the first time we move towards like doing something truly dissonant. Um, but I didn't just want to do creepy horror movie strings. Um, it's still, you can still listen to it. It's not unpleasant. It's just kind of unsettling. Um, it's, hmm. uh, it's difficult to explain. It's just the strings are all, always sound like they're shifting and moving and oscillating. But 
in front of those shifting, moving, oscillating strings is a piano melody that is incredibly simple. Um, mm. And it's it's so stark and lonely. Uh, and it's kind of, it's very present in the music. So you really hear it. And it's just kind of like, it feels like it's stalking you, or at least that was my goal. Um, and then when you fight Mora, you hear like the the full like epic version of that piano theme. And then when, sorry, this is a minor spoiler, when you finish the boss fight with uh, Mora, I'm not going to say what happens, um, mm. but when you finish the boss fight with Mora, you get a, a lighter version of that theme, that creepy, like unsettling theme. Um, you get a lighter version of it after you've uh, finished finished the fight, and that's one thing that was like important to me. I wanted like there to be like before and after moments all over the soundtrack, um, which does require like tech support, um, <laughs> which we didn't have in the which which I, I mean it sounds it sounds simple. Oh, you just play the music in the game, but it's just like you have to um, the the game has to communicate with all of the music tracks to. So, so it can remember what Ori has actually done in the game. Yep. Um, so, yeah, we didn't we didn't really have that on the first game, but this time we had an amazing implementation team that could uh, um, could help me with all of that because I'm really just focused on the music, uh, the technical side of things. Uh, I was very lucky to work with someone who could get that all in for me. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's just like subtle changes through the environment. Anyway, I've kind of uh, rambled on for a bit there, but that's like. <laughs> That's some of the themes anyway. <laughs> no, it's wonderful. And it's really nice to hear um, just how different the process is the second time round when you are trying to create yep. something different. And I'll, I'll come back to that a bit yep. later. Yep. Um, but no, thank you. Really in-depth answers and, and so nice to hear how different each of those characters felt yep. and meant to you as well. Yep. Uh, listening to the soundtrack independently from the game is still a highly overwhelming experience. Are there any specific techniques or motifs that you used that allow that emotional weight to carry away from their original context? I think if uh, if you're feeling something away from the game, it's it's this is a tricky question. Uh, hmm. I want to get I want to make sure I get the words right. It's a good question. I just want to uh, make sure I get the right right words in the right order um what i like to say about music that makes you feel something especially music uh for games or for film uh, my approach it's it might feel like i'm telling you what to feel in the music but actually mm -hmm. i'm trying what i'm really trying to do and this sounds this might sound a little bit too deep and artsy fartsy but I'm trying to uh, unlock your brain to give you permission to feel whatever you want to feel. Uh, mm. Because some people are going to watch... I'm going to take, take the flight scene as an example. So some people are simply going to feel happiness because, yay, Kuz finally learned to fly. Her, her wing is broken in the prologue and Ori finds a way to fix it. Um, and then eventually they, they, uh, you know, they take off together. So some people are just going to feel pure joy at that. But some people who might have had either a disability or a difficulty or something like that might feel that scene in a completely different way because what they're seeing is a family helping a child um, as opposed to just two, you know, um, two siblings uh, flying joyfully together. And the music isn't really supposed to, you know, tell you how to feel one way or the other. It's what I'm trying to do is to help you get in touch with your emotions. Yeah. Um, so anything you feel when listening to the soundtrack has been dictated by what I'm following in the story. And I'm, I'm glad, I'm obviously delighted that you're saying that it, it can be overwhelming, uh, but it does, um, it, it literally all comes from uh, the game having a story which, which I connected with. Mm -hmm. And I never put anything in the game that I don't feel like I have a connection with. If I'm not feeling the music, I just won't let the team listen to it. Because if I'm not feeling it... <laughs> How can I expect anyone else to? Um, so now that doesn't mean I have to be crying. It just means I have to feel whatever, whatever emotion it is that I want to feel during that scene or that I'm getting in touch with. I feel like if I'm getting in touch with something, then there's a high chance that other people will be able to as well. Absolutely. No, beautifully put. And can't agree with you more there. It's about evoking what's already there. And, and that's a really lovely approach and it definitely comes across in your compositions particularly with these scores thank you speaking more to that 
With yep. your work on the Ori games receiving such critical acclaim, do you ever feel like your work on other games has to live up to a higher standard? <laughs> and if so, how do you manage that expectation with developers? I think it's, it's interesting. Um, I haven't been pigeonholed yet, um, which is kind of surprising given, given as you said, like the, the two soundtracks for Ori have, have been really well received. But... Um, I just finished Darksiders Genesis, mm. which uh, came out in December, which is literally, you, you could not have a more different <laughs> score. Because um, it, it, it's, it's demons and guns on a horse. Uh, that, that's pretty, it, it's, it's wild. And, and that game was kind of a fun counterpoint um, to, to working on Ori. But I think, I think what developers are looking for, they're not really looking for me to emulate Ori. I think what... And I, it's it's far. I really shouldn't be saying why people might be hiring me, but it's <laughs> like I think it's because I understand the the vibe they are going for in the game because I I like to spend time playing the game. Once I get a feel for the overall vibe, nothing nothing else really really matters. Like Dark Side is a very aggressive and mm. driving game, and like at the core, um, at the core, most of the music does does have that it's kind of always pushing you forward that's like the the core core identity of the game now it does have some sonic signatures which you could totally recognize from ori that, that kind of carry over that are in my general production style um but i i place more importance than anything else on getting the overall feel right and i think if developers get that they kind of uh you know they're not expecting i think what they see when they see ori they're seeing music that matches the game perfectly and also you can't substitute it out with any other existing soundtrack um like a lot of people call ori an orchestral soundtrack but it's really not there are so many other things that make the ori soundtrack what it is and i don't think it could be replaced by another existing soundtrack partially because of the themes but also because of the the way i write um and also the instruments i use um it's my opinion that developers the worst thing for a developer when they hire a composer is that they get a score that is interchangeable. Um, I think that's the last thing they want. And I think when they're um, bringing me on, they see what has been done in Ori and Ori's pretty heavily branded with music. Um, and that's what they want for their own game. Um, and that yep. that's, so the expectation is not like deliver us a score that will get critical acclaim. It's deliver us a score um, that matches as well as um, the music did for Ori. Absolutely. Well said. Um, and not an easy question to answer, but <laughs> yes. 100%. <laughs> it's all good. 100%. Um, touching a, a bit on what you mentioned with Darkseid as well, um, you've yeah. created scores for franchises including Minecraft and most recently Darksiders. How does creating yeah. a soundtrack that continues someone else's work compare to creating a sequel to your own work, as is the case with Ori? Yeah, it's funny. I, I like this is the year of the the sequel for me. I I, I can't mention. Like, <laughs> I've got another one coming out later this year, um, which is going to be another sequel. And yeah, it's uh, it's it depends on the project really. Um, so Ori, people just wanted. I think people wanted more of the same vibe. But I'm like, I just don't want to hmm. you know, rip off myself because um, that's just. I, I, well, I just wouldn't be creatively inspired. But the thing is, the, actually, it was. It was made easier because the game is so much larger and there's so many more characters and there's so many more environments. So I'm like, wow, this is just like a much bigger playground for me to play in. So yeah. I have the basic canvas, except it's just being expanded. So actually it was it was really fun. Now, if we were to do an Ori 3, I don't know where I'd begin, but uh, you know, that <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. So it's, uh, it's, it's not something I need to worry about right now. Um, but uh, yeah, so I didn't, I didn't really have too much difficulty with um, following on with the sequel uh, for Ori. Um, with Darksiders, and again, this is where it, like the the every every project is different. Um, Darksiders, they were like, don't really pay attention to the uh, any of the music from the previous three games. Cool. Um, they uh, they hired me primarily because they heard they obviously they knew my work in ori but actually they really liked my work in uh, minecraft norse mythology because it's quite dark and aggressive right. um and uh, they were like we want some more of that but maybe with even with more modern production i'm like really you want me to go modern because like two of the other scores are pretty pretty gothic and orchestral and they were like yes and i'm like great well that sounds fun um <laughs> and, and i was like let's see 
I kind of wanted to see like how far they would go by what they what they meant with that. And there's a boss in the game called Belial. This is big, fat, slobbery demon. Yes. Um, and uh, I was like, okay. Um, I'm going to use like electric cello and put it over a dubstep beat and we're going to have orchestra as well and it totally shouldn't work um, <laughs> but it actually kind of does um, and it's the only track like that in the game so therefore and it's 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 so ridiculous and over the top it, it actually all, all just kind of works and people enjoy it when they play it and are able to get in the moment of fighting this big ridiculous beast um, so yeah they just gave me a pretty pretty open playground and th- the goal again for them was not for it, it wasn't like about following the the the, the pre- previous game's music it was about matching the feel of darksiders mm-hmm. and the previous game's music do match the feel of darksiders in their own way and this was kind of my spin on it so that was very cool to have that freedom um and then minecraft uh again kind of the same thing they were like pretty much ignore like any yeah. any of the pre-existing music because they we're doing these mythology series, uh, Greek mythology, Egyptian, Chinese, and Norse. Um, and I don't think the ambient synth approach was, which works yeah. great for the, the original game and it's iconic music that, you know, m- millions, hundreds of millions of people have listened to at this point. Um, but they wanted something that really felt different and, and they're re- releasing expansion packs like left, right and sense, you know, you've got the halo crossover, the Mario <laughs> crossover and everything. Um, so for these, it was like, make you know ambient music that isn't too aggressive um uh music that you know you can still (laughs) have fun in minecraft with but theme it uh with a whatever you think like uh, an orchestral greek style is or orchestral egyptian um the only one which surprised me was the norse mythology they were like go darker go darker we want it to be like really heavy viking stuff um it's not quite as heavy as hellblade but i was like we're we're like heading down that direction (laughs) um and i was like really surprised but they really wanted uh they really kind of wanted a dark gritty expansion pack so again it was with those it wasn't really uh it wasn't really a sequel it's more like a an expansion standalone expansion which kind of gave me complete flexibility to um to, to spread my wings um i wish i could talk about it but the sequel i'm working on right now is is like i have to follow the legacy so hard um but uh yes maybe you can follow up uh in like uh you know at the end of the year when it's when it's when it's out and i can't say what it is um, so uh. <laughs> would absolutely love to because <laughs> your insights are really interesting and would definitely be Thank interested you. to hear um yep. Obviously, if you're working on that now, your thoughts kind of at the end of that process to go, well, okay, this is yep. in comparison to, that would be awesome. Yep. Um, touching on Dark Sides, just because you talk about um, one of the bosses there, this wasn't one of yep. the questions I had written down, but having played and reviewed Genesis, absolutely yep. loved it. And one of the things I remember in particular was playing the boss scenes. And the first one of which is the one in the room with gold. Right. Yep. <laughs> and something about that when you walked in that room, I remember putting down the controller, looking at my partner and going, oh my God, something about that, the audio, the way it all worked together was just unbelievable. One of the best bosses ever. I remember, I remember distinctly doing that afterwards. Um, Darksiders, as you mentioned, did have this really big, different feel, yep. um, which again was a departure from the rest of the series. Yep. In terms of the bosses for that, because something that was, again, quite distinct with Ori and something new to the series was the boss fights. Yep. How do you go about creating s- moments that can be so big and so memorable for the player? Yeah, I love doing boss fights because it is... I, I generally don't mess around when going for the boss fights. I... I, I... I write too much and go too big. <laughs> and if they tell me to scale back, then I will do so. But I, I don't leave anything hanging out, basically. Um, so with Darksiders, um, y- you referenced Mammon. And that was actually mm. the first boss fight music that I finished for the game. Um, and all I really did was just like look at the character. And I heard the voice acting. And I was like, okay, this is a little bit silly and over the top. But he's kind of he kind of moves pretty fast. And he's got some interesting attacks. Um, he, he's you know he's ducking in and out of the gold. Um, he's kind of an irritant um, <laughs> as a as a character. Um, so I was like, all right, well let's just do something really fast. And also to this point, we haven't really had any pure orchestral mm. music tracks. Um, and I was like, well that probably is going to work here. Um, 
and that's that's pretty much what I did for that track. Um, it's it's I think it's orchestra only. I don't think there's any synth in it, which compared to all of the other bosses in the game, I think right. they do have synthetic elements. So it kind of stands out. But to to get to your um, your your wider point, which is like how do you make boss fights feel big? And it's all about context. And yeah. one of the things. Um, that happened actually in both Ori and Darksiders, um, and I had to fight quite hard for this on Darksiders. They they wanted they wanted a lot of combat music when you're exploring yep. the environment, and I'm like, you can't have like combat music all of the time when when you're just like ducking in and out of combat so quickly. It's actually yeah. very similar to Ori in terms of like the my my approach for writing combat music. So you only have combat music in Darksiders uh, when you're gated or when there's a certain amount of enemies yep. on screen. Um, so what that allows me to do is, you know, when you're exploring and just, you know, shooting the, the peons, um, you, know, you don't need combat music for that. The sound effects are going to be enough to tell you that, um, that you're in, that you're fighting something. Um, th but what that does is it allows you to step things up a gear when you're in combat and it allows, but then the combat music doesn't have to be really big. If we had combat music for like just shooting the peons, then you'd have like another layer for like another intensity layer for you know when you're gated and then another intensity layer for the boss fights and there's three three different layers of intensity for combat music the player isn't going to know the difference so i i deem it unnecessary plus the sound effects in dark Souls are really good it's mm. like let's just hear them instead of the music blaring all the time um because there's a lot of music in in dark Siders. um and it's the exact same approach for ori I don't have combat music in Ori unless you have to kill something to progress, because yeah. the sound effects do a great job of um, of communicating to you that you you know you're you're in danger, mm -hmm. um, and also what that does is it gives more room in the audio mix. So so when we do need to dial up the intensity, like in the big boss fights, we actually have room to do that. Um, now there are other games where it's completely appropriate to have music and sound all the time and <laughs> be it like this over the top intense experience, but Ori isn't one of them. Um, and Darksiders, it, it could have been, it, 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 the, the general intensity level is a bit higher than Ori, but it still has a range, I feel. Yep. I feel like it's really important to have range in the, the audio experience for, for these kinds of games. Um, so, yeah, when it's big in Ori, it's really big. And when it's big in Darksiders, it's really, really big. Um, but also when it's quiet, it's, it's really quiet. And I think... Um, that to me is actually a more engaging experience because there's sometimes when you go through long periods of intensity, you just end up being exhausted. Um, and my favorite moments, either, either in Ori or Darksiders, is when the music actually makes a statement because it hasn't done so for quite a while, and then you really feel it. Um, whereas if you'd had too many statements be made before that, you won't get quite as much impact. And when you fight the spider in in Ori 2, it, it is an event. Um, mm. And that's it, that's exactly how it should be. The game the game has events all over the soundtrack, and those are the moments that I mark out, whether it's a cutscene or an escape sequence or a boss fight. I mark those out and I try to build around them. And it's the same with, with Dark Siders. You're kind of like plotting a course through the game which of course you know you're trusting the designers that they're not going to change mm. the game too much <laughs> um, but this but this is why you play the game early uh, so you can understand it um you're, you're plotting a course through the game and figuring out what moments you really need to hit um I, i'll use i'll use a an example just from the end of the game i'm not going to spoil the end of ori um, but <laughs> we have we have it's basically a about a six minute cutscene, and oh. this just gives you an idea of of scale and the beginning is basically full orchestra. Uh, my, sorry, my first draft was basically orchestra and choir the whole way through. And I'm like, this doesn't really work because there's no, there's no range. And then when I did my second pass, I literally just muted the orchestra in the second section of the cutscene. Yeah. And I was like, problem solved. Like, cause now it's just choir. And uh, I li or literally all I did was press mute. And I was like, wow, it speaks so much more to me now because it's a direct contrast to what we've just heard. And when the orchestra comes back in at the end, it has more impact because we haven't heard it for two minutes. Yeah. Um, so that's just like a, another small example that isn't combat, but that's the kind of stuff that I think about like all the time when doing a game. Yeah, awesome. It's I, I love hearing the contrast and how important that is because it shows such an understanding of how these layers all interact to create yeah. a game. Um, and it's always so nice to hear that that's 
so heavily involved in the thought process yep. behind it too. Bit of a different question. In December 2019, you put out a poll on Twitter to determine how the public felt about spoilers in soundtrack titles. Oh, yes. <laughs> what are your own feelings on this topic and how much thought do you put into the naming process? I use Ori as an example, when the songs yeah. are so tied to the narrative. That was, uh, yeah, that was a tough one for Ori, um, mainly for the, the last 10 tracks. Um, again, if you've played the ending, um, then it's it's one of those things, like, you, you need to come up with a title that signifies that it's the ending, but you can't, like... <laughs> I mean, on Blind Forest, I literally had a track called The Sacrifice, and it doesn't say who is doing the sacrificing, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a pretty big 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 uh big spoiler and the last track in in this game is called ori embracing the light which could be positive it could be negative it could be in the middle it could be anything in between but but actually the reason for for titling it that way is it's a throwback to the first game uh when naru picks up ori in the beginning of blind forest and the music that plays there is called naru embracing the light um <laughs> so um i wanted a, a callback to the first game um, and if you play through to the end, uh, you'll understand that it's, I, I feel quite smug about that title cause it's pretty mm. good. Um, so, <laughs> but I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say why, because it's still, we're still only like two days, um, after the game's released. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, th I think, um, I think you, I think you kind of want to avoid like spoiling anything too much, but you also kind of want to give people a roadmap. Like yep. I think there are certain tracks that people will kind of, uh jump to so like the chase sequences are very popular in the original games so, literally any track which is a chase sequence i started with escape <laughs> like escape from the blah 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 or escape escaping the sandworm and i was just like yeah that makes it easy because people are just going to jump to those tracks yeah. and it's not really a spoiler because everyone knows there's going to be a chase sequence a chase sequence in uh in ori it wouldn't be an ori game without a chase sequence um uh the the boss fights are literally just using the characters names like more of the spider that like i've that, that's like pretty it's kind of like um lord of the rings shelob's lair you kind of know that it's gonna it's gonna be that track so yep. um yeah you kind of want something that's tied to the game but not literally spelling out the story um so mm -hmm. i kind of i think i landed in the middle um but from what i gather because this has come up on twitter a few times i've done a pretty good job of not spoiling the soundtrack titles um but uh I think also because it's such a it's a game that you can finish in you know two or three days i think people have generally just avoided you know listening to the soundtrack um <laughs> if they didn't if they didn't want to be spoiled yeah. and they'll just be like i'll play the game day one and then i can you know listen to the soundtrack and understand all the references hmm. no that's really nice because it, it is such a, a sticking point i guess really in <laughs> yeah. in the creative process is you can spend so yeah. long working on it and then at the end you go well how do i title it um, yeah it's 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 not easy it's easier on some some games than others but obviously with such a story driven game uh it's you just have to be careful uh, yeah i did run i did run the the final track title behind our story team and they were like yep that's great so i, I did get i did get approval on anything that was contentious okay cool that's interesting to know that that, that is part of the process well to go okay is this well acceptable? it was the process on this i don't know if i don't know if it's the process for other games but i was just like i just wanted to make sure because yeah. we're, we're a pretty tight-knit we're a pretty tight-knit yeah. team so i was just like i just contacted them on skype and we're like what do you think um, hmm. and they were all okay so no that's fabulous it's nice to hear that for rory there is such that i guess family team yep. behind it yep. um which comes across in the game as well which part of the soundtrack are you most proud of and why? You've touched on a couple of things um, during our conversations, but yeah, what are you most proud of? So um, because of the because of the there, there being more characters, um, I am like proud of the new themes, but also the development of the new themes, particularly Quolock's theme, which uh, culminates in Quolock's malaise and strength of the forest. Um, those are the track titles on the soundtrack. Um, uh, yeah, that it's 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 getting the chance to develop themes over a period of time. Whereas on the first game, I was pretty reliant on one theme mm -hmm. because you're really only with one character for most of the game. Um, in terms, yeah, so the Quolock character arc. There's also one cue called Ash and Bone on the soundtrack. Um, that plays in the sequence, uh, which is 
which ends Act One. Um, it's a pretty dark sequence, um, and it combines the themes for uh, Ori's theme, which is played on piano in that track. It combines Ku's theme, which in that track, because Ori and Ku are together, I don't use the recorder, I just use the strings. Also, the recorder would not be appropriate for the environment that they're in. Um, so Ku's theme plays on recorder, uh, sorry, Ku's theme plays on high strings, um, and Shriek's theme plays on low strings, and they kind of all interplay against each other, and it's totally tied to the gameplay, uh, because during that sequence... Uh, Shriek is stalking Ori and Ku together through the environment. Um, so I was like, can I can I blend these three themes together in some way? Um, and I think a few people have picked up on it. It's it's subtle. It's not in your face because uh, it is. It can't be like a, a really heavy cue because it's 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 in the environment called Silent Woodlands. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's it's certainly there. If you listen carefully, the three themes do intertwine. Um, and then I'm not gonna lie. I think. I have to be honest, I think the ending of our game is perfect. I can't say why, because <laughs> uh, again, spoilers, uh, but I've I've watched it, um, I mean, I don't know how many times I've watched it, but I still, <laughs> I'm not going to even give away the emotion, I still feel mm. what I want to feel uh, <laughs> every, every time, uh, every time I watch it. Uh, and I'm like getting major enjoyment from watching other people uh, play the play the end of the game too, um, just because they're they're feeling whatever they want to feel it's the it's it was funny for all the for all the time that we spent on this game the ending was actually the thing that came together pretty easily um mm. like i saw it for the first time and i was like this is this is great um it was actually the scene i had least trouble scoring in terms of in terms of the cut scene it was just one of those things i was like okay i know what the solution is and yeah the music you hear in um in the last six minutes other than that change where i took out the orchestra but it's basically it's basically version one um <laughs> of the music which does not oh. happen very often so it's kind of cool a testament to the whole team in in being able to convey exactly what needed to be conveyed at that time too yeah. so yeah that's amazing and and thank you so much for sharing sharing that because i know questions like that can be really hard to answer um especially when there are correct me if i'm wrong were there 60 tracks in yep. this score yeah there's yes. 60 there's 60 well there's 60 tracks on the album uh but that was cut down um there's hmm. so the the album is 185 wow. minutes um there's probably about 220 minutes of music in the game and it's 60 tracks but the boss fights are represented in the in the soundtrack by one one track on the soundtrack but in right. actuality um a boss fight consists of an intro and then phase one combat, phase two is usually a chase, and then phase three is the final phase of combat with the boss fight, and then mm. there's an outro. So it's actually like five pieces of music stitched together. Um, okay. So what you hear on the soundtrack is the kind of the, the stitching together as you'll hear it in the game, because obviously <laughs> these are interactive pieces of music. So I've just yeah. kind of stitched them together to make it, you know, a, a, an enjoyable listening experience. Um, but, you know, some of these boss fights are, are long, like I think the spider spider track on the soundtrack is is a good five and a half minutes and you probably will hear all of that during the during the during the game cool very cool um goodness I really appreciate all your answers i'm just thinking yep. if there was anything else you touched on that i wouldn't mind kind of coming back to sure um goodness i i, I will mention it because you mentioned it right up in the first question i asked but the anticipation yep. of a sequel Right. Um, as you said, the first game, quite unknown, you burst out onto a scene and it's like, oh my gosh, here it is. Yeah. And so then with the announcement of a sequel, which again, you got to reveal on stage, um, yes. in, in many ways, yep. how, how do you go about the anticipation of that sequel? Obviously, you've got fans talking, you've got the team going, okay, well, how do we do this again? Um, kind of just describe that anticipation and that experience. Yeah, I mean, we, we obviously announced a long time ago. Um, that stage reveal was, was really cool, and it was a real honor to be you know asked yeah. to <laughs> present the game in that way. Although all I could think about was, like, don't screw up because it'll be <laughs> on the internet forever um, if, I, if I do. Uh, unfortunately, we had plenty of rehearsals, so it was fine. Um, yeah, so 
when we started, I think there was a lot of, you know, thinking about, you know, how do we make the game better and what does that even mean? You know, when you ask the art department, what does make the art better actually mean? Um, what does make the music better mean? Because it's such, it's such a nebulous question because yeah. if the art, you know, just in case the case of art and music, it was well received. So you could you probably could just do the exact same thing again and people would be happy but we came to a conclusion very early on that we didn't just want to make ori 1.5 and um, we really <laughs> wanted to make ori ori 2 and so the, the game really was designed from the ground up um the animation was using a different pipeline um mm. the art is the art is has got way more depth because it's it's kind of 2.5d now more than more than 2d um and the music I eventually, you know, fig figured out that like there were two things I wanted to do. One of them was pretty straightforward. Um, when you get to do a sequel, it's usually it's usually because the first game did well, and uh, that means there's more resources. Um, so, the production quality of the soundtrack, um, if you A B, um, if you A B the two soundtracks, the production quality I think is a little higher. But don't be wrong, there's still tracks that I love listening to on the first one, but um, we got a bigger orchestra. We recorded in a studio in London called Air Studios, which is where all the Harry Potter movies have been recorded, wow. uh, all of the all of the Bond movies, uh, Inception, Interstellar. The list is the list is crazy, um, but it was it was like a bucket list thing that I've a room oh. I've always wanted to record in. Um, but also, it's not just you know not just because I want to record that. It's actually because I think it is the best place to record the soundtrack for a game like Ori because it has a magnificent reverb. Um, so the sound, like just when it dies away, in it, it's a big church that's been converted to a studio, oh. um, and this when the sound just dies away, it is it is the most glorious sound. Um, so we had a bigger orchestra in a better recording space, and the other big difference um, in terms of production quality was this time we had a real choir. On the first game, we did not have a real choir, um, and with the with the greater depth and slightly darker tone of the story, um, I wanted. Um, I wanted more human voices um, and when you have a group of people especially yeah. when they're singing by themselves it can be very powerful and I just referenced that that scene in the, the epilogue the middle scene when I took the orchestra away and it was just the choir it like it, it was addition by subtraction because now you could actually hear the choir completely because it wasn't being blocked by the orchestra and I was like oh why didn't I do that sooner it was just <laughs> so obvious um, so yeah having having a real choir and I used that I, I leaned on them heavily in the score but but also doing that like has some has some other cool benefits as well like during this during the fight with the spider um, at various parts of the fight the choir chants more rut more rut which is just the spider's name and during the fight with quolock the the men uh chant quolock uh during during the boss fight it's not something you might like notice while you're like in the zone of gameplay <laughs> but perhaps on a sec perhaps on a second playthrough or when you're listening to the soundtrack you'll be like oh that's that's kind of cool I, mean, I missed that the first time around it's like it's not in your face but it's just kind of there um so yeah production production quality and then the other thing was I wanted to make sure that the music changed in a more granular way uh, as the player progressed through the game. A lot of games like this have, you know, a ha one or two, um, one or two music cues per environment. But in several parts of this game, the music changes uh, quite frequently. Um, the best example I can give is the the ancient wellspring. Once you get inside, you have uh, an introductory cue um, that plays, and it's kind of the, the wellspring is it was pitched to me as like uh an ethereal haunted house um <laughs> that you're trying to work your through it's like packed full of puzzles and spikes and rotating cogs um so you kind of have like the first environmental cue and then there's a little combat arena so that's like another piece of music that's the second cue and then we have this puzzle room which is just it's a room that rotates 90 degrees and it rotates the entire environment it's a very cool little puzzle room and there's the first version of the puzzle room music and then when you pull the lever that rotates the environment i've recorded a new version of that puzzle music but at a slightly higher tempo and a slightly higher pitch it's not just a cheap like digital effect i did actually make a new <laughs> recording with the orchestra um and you do that three times um and each time the music just like increases a little hmm. bit in intensity uh, and then when you fit when you pull the lever for the last time then you get a more relaxing piece of music because yeah you did it and yes this stuff is obvious um but like it does require more music to be written and it requires more recording time yeah. and not 
you know not every game has the resources to do that i could have totally gotten away with one piece of music for the entire rotating room puzzle and probably no one would have complained um but i was like you know what this it actually isn't that hard because i'm really just doing the same piece of music yeah. just with a couple of variations so i was like why not i'll just do it um and that's that's the kind of attention to detail that Moon Studios requires, not just of the composer, but of pretty much everyone who works on the game. Um, like it's it's if you feel if you feel that the game would benefit even just a little bit, then then put it in. If it doesn't benefit, someone's going to play test it and they're going to tell you that it didn't really work. And then you're just like, okay, well I'll just go to the more simple simple solution. Um, but in this case, it, it did work. And and you'll find examples of that kind of more granular shifting music th throughout the game. Cool. Very cool. Um, congratulations again on the success of Ori and the continued success of Will of the Wisps. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for your time. This uh, I say this morning for me, this afternoon it's, for it's, you. It's afternoon, yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, always really appreciated and, and so wonderful to hear your insights, especially when it is so tied to the overall experience. And yep. you have very thoughtful answers that yeah, definitely really appreciated.